Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody out there on YouTube, wherever you are in the world, whatever time of day it is for you. I hope you are doing well. Today, we are going to be discussing what is in my very first camera bag. Uh, part of this journey is documenting the beginning. So this video, I imagine, is going to be fairly short because there's really not a lot that goes in my camera bag at this point in my journey. But if this is your first time here and you haven't already taken the time to bless that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it, if you would do that for me, I would appreciate it. It also makes sure that you don't miss out on my weekly uploads as well as weekly live streams on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time that actually just recently started. So let's kick this off with the very big portion, the very the, the meat, the the whatever you want to call it, the bulk of the, what is, what is the word I'm looking for here? Ah, yes, the camera. We'll just call it the camera. I am currently shooting on the Sony a6100. It is an absolutely phenomenal mirrorless camera that I have fallen in love with, but to be fair, it's my first one and only camera that I have shot on it this caliber, so I don't know if that's a fair comparison. But the reason that I chose specifically Sony is because out of the major brands, Canon, Nikon, Sony, I know I'm forgetting one for some reason, it's not coming to me right at the moment, but you guys know what it is and you're probably roasting me in the comments right now. I accept it. Out of the major brands, Sony was one of the only ones at the time of purchase that was providing a clean HDMI out straight out of camera. I didn't have to do anything except toggle an option from within Sony's menu options and for me, that was a huge appeal. I chose the A6100 specifically because as I recall, and I'm open to being wrong on this, but as I recall, it was the first option in the alpha lineup that gave me a mic in um, so that I could do things like vlogging and kind of have like, well, what we're doing right now, which is not vlog, obviously, but plugging in an external microphone source so that I could do things beyond just using my camera as essentially a webcam that's glorified. Coupled with the camera, I also carry the kit lens that most of us are familiar with. If you are a Sony photographer or videographer, it is the Sony 16mm to 50mm f3.5 to 5.6. It is an incredible kit lens. I was able to take some of my very first portraits on that recently, and I can honestly say this lens, while it is the kit lens and therefore very cliche, I think that there is still a plethora you can do with that lens despite the aperture range, I really do believe there's a lot that can be done with it. When I ordered my Sony a6100 with the kit lens, I also ordered it with the second lens that was available from B&H at the time. It was the Sony 55-210 to f, I want to say 4.5 to 6.3, something to that effect. And I definitely can say that having a telephoto lens in my kit has been phenomenal. I have really thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm still trying to get the hang of where its use case is for me personally, but I'm also still getting a feel for my own personal style of photography, which as of recently, I've been really enjoying nighttime and portrait style photography and cars. Honestly, car photography has been a huge fun thing for me, but I haven't gotten to do car photography where there was someone actually in the car that would be willing to, you know, turn on the headlights or do, you know, actually have access to the car. They're all parked on the side of the road and they just catch my eye. That sounds creepy when you say it like that. The third and final lens that I currently am using is actually the one you guys are looking through right now. It is the Sigma 16mm f1.4 prime lens. It is probably the only prime lens I will ever own. Being a minimalist, I really enjoy one lens that can do a myriad of different things. And obviously a prime lens can really only do one thing as far as focal lengths go. That's kind of the point. Of course, you get the trade-off of a lower aperture, which is phenomenal. Obviously, that's a huge help. But honestly, I think that there are like the G Master lenses from Sony, that the holy trinity that I've been drooling over for the last little while, because they have a constant aperture of f2.8, if I'm not mistaken, I'd rather go that route, get a little bit of a higher aperture, but have the versatility of a more various focal length, if that makes sense. The reason that I went ahead and purchased this particular lens was actually from a recommendation of another YouTuber by the name of Alpha Gaming. That's what they go by here on YouTube. It stars Harris Heller, but also you have his editor, um, Sam Woodle, as well as, uh, oh my gosh, what is the guy that's doing the audio stuff now? I'm literally forgetting his name. I can see his face. He's Oriental. He's got a really sick haircut, but I don't remember his name. You know, I, I suppose there are worse things to remember about someone if you forget their name. If you think that their haircut's cool, I suppose you're safe. <laughs> 
But anyway, it was a recommendation from Harris Heller over on Alpha Gaming, and it was for the live stream. That is exclusively the reason I bought this lens. Bit of a steep price for a lens for just streaming, though. So I have actually stepped out and taken some wide-angle landscape photography as well as some nighttime cityscape photography uh, with this lens. And at some point in the future, I'll end up actually featuring a lot of my photos that I've taken probably do a video of like my my favorite photos in 2020 or something like that um, so you guys can see those but that'll be beginning of next year before I do that the last thing that I do carry around with me it doesn't actually go in the camera bag I just take it with me uh, my camera bag is actually very small right now it's just a little little bag that came with the camera so it doesn't really fit a whole lot but it's the Joby gorilla pod I absolutely love this tripod I have been able to get some of the coolest photos because of the angles, just being able to grip onto stuff, it's amazing. What I will say is my initial intent on acquiring that tripod was not for photography. It was actually for vlogging, and I will say this. It was way too big of a... It, it's a beefy boy, and for vlogging, I don't think it was a good idea. But for its purpose in photography, amazing. I think it, I think it really adds some versatility to the kit. At this point, I don't have any extra batteries or SD cards which is a tough scene, but I have a 64 gigabyte SD card in my camera at all times. I also have the camera battery that it came with. The only downside right now is that for whatever reason, there wasn't a charging station that came with the camera. I don't know if that's normal, but I didn't think that should be normal if it is, because now I just have to plug it into the wall and charge the battery in the camera, which I'm not a fan of. So that was the only big drawback to that anyway. My biggest goals right now, as far as acquiring things between now and next year, my hope is to be able to get a couple extra batteries and a couple extra SD cards, because I feel like those are just kind of your bread and butter. You really need to have those things as a photographer, from what I understand. I haven't ran out of space so far. I also haven't, I mean, I've had to charge my battery a couple of times mid shoot, which has been the bigger problem. But the other things that I really wanna do between now and the next time I record this video next year to update you, I really hope to be able to have acquired at least one Sony uh, GM lens. Um, and I there's a couple of them that I really like. The Holy Trinity, obviously. You guys know what I'm talking about if you're a Sony photographer or videographer. They're gorgeous. The Grandmasters are they're great. I've hoped to acquire one of those as well as the Peter McKinnon and Nomadic collaboration of a camera bag. It was It's a phenomenal bag. I, I'm a lot like Peter in one way. Uh, Peter is very organized and neat as a person. I've noticed that just it bleeds through his content. It also is very evident in just the way that bag was designed. And I love all of the little, the way that it's modular, the way that you have, if you order the whole kit, you have two different bags. You have the big bag that can actually fit like literally anything you could possibly dream of, plus clothes as well as just a little everyday carry bag. There's something very satisfying about how it all goes together as well. If you guys haven't checked out that bag and you are a fan of photography or videography and you're starting to think maybe I need a new camera bag, it is a little bit more expensive than what you might be able to pick up otherwise. But personally, I think it's well worth the cost. I'm not sponsored to say that. You guys are more than welcome to go just research it. I'll try and remember to throw a link in the description. We'll see if I remember. <laughs> Obviously, there's not a lot to this particular video this year, but if you did enjoy it, feel free to bless that like button for me. Leave a comment down below of some things that you think I should add to my kit if you are a photographer and videographer, and maybe there are some things, even if they're more minor, that I just haven't thought of. Please hit me with those in the comments. But until the next video, this is Bearden for Hope, signing off.